tools. Of course, no job's complete without a hammer. My uh, hold down spring tool, my funny brake pliers. We'll just use the two ends, that end and this end. Of course, uh, a line wrench. This one happens to take a 9 16 on the brake line to get the line off the back side of the wheel cylinder. There's a new wheel cylinder. Okay. Don't uh, throw your box away until you know it's the right part been installed. I just got the wrong ones given to me. I had to go down and get the, uh, the correct ones. <laughs> Here's my shoes. Now, there's a primary and a secondary shoe. Secondary shoe has the longest lining on them. If I compare them here. This one goes to the rear of the assembly. This goes to the front of the assembly. Front one right here, primary. Okay, we'll get to the shoes later. We'll lubricate with seal glide. We're gonna hose things down, get all the brake dust off some brake spray. A little buffing with my buffer. Needle nose vice grips, I'll show where they go in just a moment. Here we go. Alrighty. Get the hammer off. Or to get the drum off. Usually I would use a can of uh, penetrant oil here. Today I just feel like brake spray. <laughs> Smack Oli's on the ring. You're gonna smack on a drum. Smack it good. Get it to break loose. This is, this is where they rust on, it's down here. Okay. All right, pull the drum off. All the brake dust, don't breathe it. Dump it out. You just dump it out. And if you wanna, just set it down on the ground, walk away. Just walk away. Put the dust clear. I'm gonna go ahead and hose down the dust. This helps keep the dust from never getting airborne. And by golly, there's color to those springs. We'll go over here as well. That's good. This stuff evaporates fast too. Look at the drum for a minute. The inside looks pretty good. There's no groove, it's good and smooth. I'm not gonna resurface this. I'm gonna put it back in service. Good shape. In the van, well it's a 96 with 260,000 miles. <laughs> Let's get a little bit closer. Let's start taking off some springs. Garbage can out of the way. I love a magnetic tray. Start keeping all our parts with that. Okay, that ought to work. Starters. Let's take off the return springs. This end right here. Whoops. him off. Keep him. I'm going to lay him in the tray. This has got a link and a spring. Take the wire link and the spring off in one step. These are dual servo brakes by the way, not leading trailing. Okay. Shorter spring to the rear. Set that in the tray to the rear. Here's the wire link. Fish it out. Okay, true dual servo has this little deal. Okay, um, let's do the hold down springs next. You can use a pair of needle nose vice grips or pliers, or you can use a special tool for hold down springs. This one's a Matco tool. You can buy them anywhere. Okay. Got a little slot in them. Push down, 
give it a 90 degree turn, falls off, a little hold down pin. Hold down pin comes from out behind. Almost looks like a nail, doesn't it? Let me get my glove off. Kind of looks like a nail. I'm gonna go, you should replace these. You get new ones, you can buy a hardware kit. You get all new springs and the hold down piece. But this is the piece that comes through. And when you push the spring down, you turn 90 degrees and it locks. You turn 90 degrees, comes off. Okay. By the way, well, we'll get to the next spring. The other hold down spring, usually sh uh, primary one, you get it to come off. A lot of rust we're dealing with here. Okay. It'll go. There it comes. Let's try a few times. This one is often taller than the one in the rear. Okay. The front primary shoe is often taller. I just kind of keep them oriented. All right. With the hold down springs off, the return springs off, I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, adjuster arm spring and the adjuster arm and don't lose the collar. The little collar piece comes in. This is what things pivot on. Whoops. This adjuster arm pivots on this collar. Okay, the little pivot piece. The hold down spring goes to the middle, and without this collar, this adjuster arm won't sit in the right place and it'll cut the hold down pin right in half eventually. An important collar. All right, keep track of it. And of course, here's that same spring. He's the last spring I installed, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna pull down, I'm gonna pull out the, what's known as the parking brake strut. Quite often these have a spring on the end. An anti-rattle spring, that's all it is. One end of this strut is got a wider opening than the other end. The narrow end usually goes forward and that's where the spring goes too. This sits around the shoe and the emergency brake lever. We're going to go after the emergency brake lever next. In fact, I'm just going to pull the whole shoe assembly off. Okay. The emergency just fell off. This little emergency lever. The cable is down here. And what I've got now here are the shoes. Held together by a hokey little sp the, the, the star wheel spring. I'm just going to kind of roll the shoes, pull the star wheel out. We'll clean the threads up here in a minute. The spring, it has a direction as well. The long end goes to the rear. Take him off, and there's your shoes. And as mentioned earlier, here's the old shoes. Here's the uh, primary shoe. has the shortest amount of lining on it compared to the uh, secondary shoe, which was on the rear. has the longest lining on it. Continuing on, one thing I didn't pull out earlier was the other hold down pin, where the hold down spring goes on for that uh, primary shoe on the front of the assembly. A little hole it goes through. You should recognize that. Okay, again we'll replace him with a hardware kit. Okay, next we're going to do is buff these raised pads that the shoes rub on and the parking brake lever and cable. We'll just kind of push him around as we need to. Give him a buff. 
There's a raised area here. Through the other side. Okay. Put some seal glide on them. You know, seal glide, you can use anti seize if you like. You can buy seal glide about any parts store. This is just the Napa's version, I guess, but everyone makes it. Just a line or a layer. Greaseless shoes could slide without making a noise. When rear brakes squeak, these are the pads that need a little lubrication on them. You can use wheel bearing grease if you want. This stuff holds up a little better. Alrighty. Now, let's go ahead to my new shoes. I'm also going to lubricate. Um, if this is all varn or rusted up, I'd, I'd uh, clean it up with solvent or brake spray. This little cap needs a little lubrication. Here's the threads. You can buff them off with a wire wheel. Hose them down. Let me get a towel over here. We'll hose these down. These are good and free. Got lucky. Sometimes you got to replace this whole little star wheel adjuster assembly. It gets so rusted. I'm going to just kind of blow that off out a little bit. Put some seal glide on these threads. In fact, I'm going to put it down here. And as I spin the, thread, the device up, it's going to take the lube and lubricate those threads. I'm going to leave, oh, about four or five threads here. We can see that or not. I don't turn them in all the way. You just have to adjust more. If I back it out, oh, four or five threads. It's usually pretty close for the self-adjustment later. Okay. Now, ready for the shoes. Put the spring on. Put this spring on. It's important which way that spring goes because we don't want the spring touching the teeth. If they can't spin freely, it won't self-adjust. And the star wheel goes towards the rear, toward the secondary shoe. I just kind of roll the shoe, get it in place, and voila. Whoops, not quite in place there. We're in place now. Now we put it on the car, just like that. Before I replace this wheel cylinder, I'm going to break this uh, flare nut loose, then the two nuts. Nine sixteenths line wrench. Sometimes they're thirteen mil, sometimes they're ten mil. Let's see if he'll break loose. Good. Looks like he will. He's rusty. It's a line wrench. He's got to break it loose. Sometimes I'll throw some penetrant oil or once again a little brake spray. <laughs> That's what I feel like today. Once it's broke loose, I can use a regular end wrench. Just got to get it broke loose. Mm, that rust. Mm. OK, 
Okay, I'll work on him some more. Right now, once he's broke loose, see I can't break the two bolts loose as well. Counterclockwise. That's a good thing. Counterclockwise. Boom. I'm going to get a little more spray on thread. Here it comes. Yeah. Get this guy broke loose before you take the bolts out. That's for sure. Here's the bleeder. I think the rubber cap off. I might keep that as an extra. We'll, we'll get the new wheel cylinder on on a nice shiny new bleeder to work with. I think. This is an 11 millimeter socket. Just about out. Okay. Take the two bolts out. The line is out. It's loose. Don't bend it, you can help it. Now, come out here. Here's the wheel seal. I'm just going to give it a smack. There we go. They get so old and worked up sometimes that these won't even push in anymore. Oh, that was still moving a little bit. Shell little fluid out. Here's the nice new one. These pistons work really nice. Bleeder. We'll roll him in. And I always do the brake line up first, then put the bolts in. Okay. Back to the back side of this wheel cylinder. Again, start this brake line first. And don't cross thread it. Make sure. It wants to start. Oh, got lucky. It's going right in. Now I'll put the bolts in. I'm going to have to rock. Yeah. The wheel cylinder a little bit back and forth. We'll just go ahead and get these two bolts in. Let me shake them around a little. I always start them before I put a wrench to them. All of them. Don't put a wrench to any one of them until they've all got a good start. 
He's good. The line is good. This other one's kind of being stubborn. Hope I can walk him in easy. Looks like he's gonna go. Okay. Forgot to show you one detail. When I started the job, before I took the wheel cylinders off, I even doing both sides of the car by the way. I put those yellow pliers, or the hose clamp pliers. So I wouldn't lose any brake fluid. Otherwise, when I broke the brake line loose on the wheel cylinder, I would have had brake fluid dripping all day. If you pinch off the line, you won't lose brake fluid very much, hardly at all. It makes bleeding a dream. Okay. Let's put this together. Alrighty. Of course, my shoes. Gotta make sure the secondary one, the one with the longest lining, goes to the rear. Before I put it on, I gotta put the parking brake lever in a little kind of triangular slot there. He just hooks in there. He just hooks in, that's all. There. Gotta make sure the pistons line up on the shoes. And what I like to do is get a hold down spring on first. The primary one. hole, get him lined up, Where's my tool? look what the slot is, kind of holding there's your index finger, best guess, your best try. Oh my, I got lucky the first try. Okay. I'm going to get the other hold down spring on, but I got to remember to have the lever and that little collar. This little piece right here. Put him back in. the hole down, pin through, put the collar over it right into that hole, make sure it goes in the hole. Otherwise you may not get this hold down spring on very well. Same deal here. You look at it, try to give it your best approach. You gotta push back of that head with my other hand here. Whoops. Better for light or not. Okay. Where's my slot? There it is. Okay, that spring is now on. And my adjuster arm can pivot. Okay. That's a little better light. Okay. Shoes are on. Hold down springers are on. I actually got my shoes contacting what's called the anchor pin up here too. 
got to make sure they're kind of there, but they're going to fall off here. <laughs> it's just part of doing brake shoes. As I mentioned earlier, the wider uh, part of this strut goes towards the parking brake side or the secondary shoe side. I got to go around both the uh, parking brake lever and the shoe. And you just kind of got to pull one of these back a little, make some room. Slide him in there. That shoe's touching the anchor. I got to pull this shoe up out of the groove so it'll go with the anchor at the same time. Get the strut to line up on its little jaw or opening. Okay. We're moving along. I want this to sit flush. Mm -mm. It's not there yet. Maybe I should pull it off and clean the rust off. Probably should. Wiggle him off. This guy keeps the shoes in place. All right, put this collar back in place. It's time to put on the return springs. I'm going to put this link on first. It hooks onto the adjuster arm. I have to kind of hold the adjuster arm down here by the, sh by the star wheel. Ooh, get it on there. If I pull that adjuster arm down all the way, I just might get this thing to fall on, and I did. Just kind of move the shoe around. Okay, I'm going to put the front spring on now. This has got a little foot hooks on that anchor pin. Got to find the hole. You put the hook of the spring in kind of like a, it's almost like a backwards approach. You put it in the hole and it really wraps in there nice. It just doesn't hook. The back side of the hook is what contacts the shoe. Okay, now, not sure. This spring goes around the uh, anchor pin good. Get a little added blessing there. Okay, one more spring. Same kind of approach. I'm going to go in and hook it in this way. That way the hook's up. I'm going to stretch it. To the wire link. There's a hook on the wire link. Make sure the shoe's in place. Okay. If this shoe will never touch the anchor, your emergency cable is probably all frozen and rusted up and won't let this arm that sits behind the shoe move where it needs to move. This is sitting against the anchor nicely. We're out of the grooves on both shoes. We're both touching the anchor. My springs are on. I even got a spring down here by the uh, star wheel on correctly. There's only one more spring to put in. And it's the one for the adjuster arm. I just take my, you gotta move the lever up, shove it up there. Whoops, it came off the link. 
just kind of showing my approach though. We better get this arm back on the link. Okay. I just get my big fat thumb and shove this spring up in its place. There's a little place for it to flip up to. Get in there in one shot. It's not in there, right? Get in there. There. Now it's in. It's around the adjuster arm. And a little adjuster. Can actually hook on the star wheel when it needs to adjust. You hook on a tooth and moves up when it needs to. Okay. Ready to throw the drum on. See if the shoes rub on the drum at all. Looks like they are gonna rub too good. So I gotta turn the adjuster. I'm gonna pull the adjuster arm and rotate the um, adjuster down. Push things together. See if the drum will fit on now. Guess I overdid it. Back it off a little bit more. Oh boy. I have to loosen that up a little. Ooh, a tad tight. <laughs> Back up and pull up a few times. Uh, Self adjust a little. Okay. I'm going to cheat on the bleeding. I'm just going to open the bleeder. Oops. Open the bleeder, let the gravity bleed here. Just pull off the rubber cap. Oh, it's a little guy. Yep, five sixteenths. And her little air bubble already. if the gravity will let it flow. Put the drum back on. Okay. 
I'm bleeding, buddy. comes. Just need to be a little patient. Let it drip here. I don't know. Five, ten seconds. Got to fill up that uh, wheel cylinder. That's why it takes a while. Long. Got to fill the vol volume up with the wheel cylinder. Maybe we're there. Give it a manual bleed now. Most of the work's done. <laughs> 